I'm Mel Stewart and this is Swim Swam Podcast. Joining me today is a man who needs no introduction. He's a man who is an icon in the sport. 90 medals won, 90 international medals won, 54 gold, 22 silver, 14 bronze, 12 time Olympic medalist, the second most decorated Olympic swimmer in history. Today we have Ryan Lochte. Hey. <laughs> Looking for the latest swim technology from the fastest brands? Find the right suit for you with Swim Outlet's 2020 Tech Suit Review. Available now at swimoutlet.com slash blog. I love you, buddy. I really appreciate <laughs> you being here. I, I do. Yes, of course. You know, it's uh, when, when, I, when I talk to people, when people figure out what I do for a living, they ask me questions about athletes. You know, they're, they, they ask about two people. They ask about Michael Phelps and they ask about Ryan Lochte. And I, in swimming, everybody knows you, like you've earned their respect. You, you have so many years on deck. It's like they, they, they love you. People outside the Olympics, they, you know, they have one impression from the Olympic Games, and it's, yeah. um, it's varied. We'll just say it's varied. Yeah. And um, we're not going to get into the history of why it's varied. We're just going to say it's varied, and it's a uh, – so they're not – you know, they're, they're asking. They're curious. Because you're you are globally famous, and this is how yeah. I respond. And I want you to know this is how I respond. You can give me a different response to him if you'd like to. If you think you can do it better, All right. I said, "Look, look, guys, if if you're taking a ten hour road trip and you want somebody riding shotgun, so it's fun and the time will go fast, you want Ryan Lochte riding shotgun." <laughs> uh, I guess that's a good way to put it. Yeah, <laughs> that is that is a good way to put it. So that here's for, for folks listening out there, this is what I, I, you know, maybe you're listening on the download, maybe you're watching, but if you're going to try and pop over and check out his bio, don't do it because I've done it for the last four hours and I've got a headache. I feel like I've been studying to get into medical school. <laughs> it's got a lot going on. So let's, we're going to talk today about where we're at right now. And, uh, yeah. and I, I've got an impression. I feel like, I, I, you know, are, are you pinning your last chapter? Is this the last chat? Is this the last Olympics for Ryan Lochte? I don't know. That's right. I, mean, I, I honestly, I don't know. There's been so many ups and downs in my career, especially in the past four years that I've, I mean, I've reached out to so many people like Phelps included being like, how'd you do this? Like, where you always dedicated every day to the swimming and like I have those doubts every now and then, but um, I think since this whole pandemic started um, and the Olympic, cause I was ready for last summer. I was ready. I was like, let's, let's end this on a good note. Um, but now I think I just have more fuel for my fire and that I'm just, I'm just ready to rock. Just keep bringing it to me um i'm i'm loving swimming i'm actually having fun again which i haven't been able to say that since 2012 olympics um i'm enjoying going to the swimming pool every day i'm enjoying getting my excuse my french uh my ass kicked every day like i love that pain i miss it and i love that excitement of being able to race the best people in the world, like Caleb Dressel. I race him every day in swim practice. I love it. And I'm finding, I'm finding, I guess you can say my mojo back. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'm just enjoying swimming. So I can't say that this will be my last Olympics. I'm going to stop swimming when I start thinking that swimming is a job. Right now it's not. It's just a sport that I like to do. Yeah, you know, here's the thing. This this would uh, this would be unusual, except we have history. Uh, yeah. I was a teammate with Dara Torres. You were, t dude, I'm, I am 51 <laughs> years old. I was on two Olympics with Dara Torres, and you yeah. share Olympics with Dara Torres. Yeah, <laughs> she, she, she did it until she was 41. She had and she yeah. had her best Olympics at 41. Yeah. So it's you could do this at 40. And, I mean, uh, age. Uh, as far as I know, right now, and the way I'm paying more attention to my body outside of the pool i mean i'm still i still need to be better at some things outside of the pool like eating wise and stuff but 
um, I'm paying more attention and I'm paying more attention to listening to my body in swim practice where I can't go sometimes I can't do 10,000 meters every day. I can't do that anymore. My body just uh, says no. Yeah. Uh, so we, we, we need to, we need to put this in context because <laughs> we, we got to, we put this in context. Uh, you showed up at, you were, you were at nationals. And you won nationals. By the way, at Swim Swam, when you won nationals, it's like our traffic blew up. You about you almost shut our site down. And uh, it was it's, it was a big deal because your fans were like, "Ryan's back! Wow, this is you know they, they they were it was a big moment. It's you know it was it was a redemption moment in in, in many ways. But it mm-hmm. was um and it was a solid swim. Um, but let's be honest, you swam that race with a spare tire. I've seen you a few times in your career, and you had you had you had back fat. There was a lot of Ryan Lochte back fat. So I, what I want you, what I want to ask you is this. I before, we know what, what, what you, can, the, you can talk about that, but the, what, what is your, what's your, what's your, what's your weak spot? Like my weak spot is ice cream. My weak spot is potato uh, chips. My weak, is, weak spot is soda. I love soda and pizza and wings. Like, it's just those those two things. I mean, it was a family tradition. Every Friday, I would have it, and I've only missed it like five or six times until like this pandemic started. And then I started was like, man, I can't really eat this anymore. Like, I gotta start, you know, watching what I eat and sodas. I was having like four or five sodas a day. Like, no, that just there's my there's my there's my tire. <laughs> Um, but yeah, nationals, I was 42 pounds overweight and no, that's not good at all. It, it was in every, so I'm walking around on deck and after the swim and everyone is just like, they were effervescent. They were, they were it just, you know, it's a, everyone's experienced your career for so long and they liked seeing you win. it was an exciting mm-hmm. moment, but everyone was also saying, wow, imagine what he'll do without a spare tire. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm still like, it's not easy. Like if I have a slice of pizza, I see it the next day. Like it does not come off that easy, which I hate. I get so frustrated every day being like, cause I have to be so almost perfect which drives me crazy because I'm not that person. I'm not a perfect like cookie cutter. I don't have everything perfect. Like I don't do that. I need, I need my cheat days. I need a soda. I need pizza. And, but it just pisses me off because it takes so long to get off and I'm still working on it. Um, I'm doing a lot better, but I still got ways to go. Be specific. I know you have a general idea. You might know exactly. What did you weigh when you won nationals? And what do you weigh now? What was I, 217 or 218? And right now, right now, um, because I just had surgery, so I was out of the water for six weeks. Um, So I did gain, I went back down to 189. Um, that was leading up to like during the pandemic. So I was ready and then they postponed the Olympics and then I got injured at the end of the summer in August. So, um, I kind of gained some weight back. Um, but right now I'm like 198, 199. So I still got ways to go. And let's, let's, let's be more specific about this, but it's my opinion as a, as a fan, as somebody who's, who's been on deck at all these events, it seemed like 2011 world championships. 2012 Olympics. That was like this is this is this is when you were really really on. 2011 Worlds was really on. Yeah. And uh, so, what were you weighing in at that point? I was 194, but I was just jacked. I was ripped. I had muscles on top of muscles. Um, I look at pictures. I mean, actually, my wife shows me pictures. <laughs> And she's like, look what you used to look like. And I'm like, oh, man, I'm getting there, honey. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I was, uh, I mean, like I said, it, when you get older, it's a lot harder, a lot harder. It's okay, okay. So, I, you know, I wanted to, like, put this under the, for our audience, like, you're, you're pinning your, 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 you're already an icon, but you're pinning that, that, that true final icon chapter. But the truth is, it's an open-ended book. 
you're still writing it. But this is a big moment. This is a big Olympics. Yeah. And there's a lot of drama. And uh, what's interesting is uh, after you won nationals, it, it, it's like, okay, Ryan's in play. And if, you're, if you have just a few brain cells and you're swimming in his events, particularly the 200 IM, or you know, whatever you're, wherever you're focusing, and you're in the final, you should be afraid of Ryan Lochte because you're the outlier. And uh, so I, I, I don't, so it does, See, does, that, uh, does that hit your brain? Do you think about that? Not at all. I think the opposite because like I'm, I'm not even in the ballpark of where I am or going to be at the end of the summer in 2021. So I feel like I'm the underdog. Um, and I put my mindset like that because it makes me hungry every day when I go to practice. Like I'm at the bottom. I got to work my way every day to the top. And that's my mentality. And that's basically my mentality ever since I started swimming. No matter what, at the end of the season, whatever the outcome was, I knocked myself back down to the bottom. So I have a purpose every day of going to the swimming pool and trying to wake, work my way back up to the top. You, so you're not aware. So here's the thing from the outside looking in. Yes. If you're, if, if, if you're in the mix, um, you should be afraid of Ryan Lochte because it, we, we know that your, your level of talent and your, your sense of, of being a competitor is, uh, is daunting. And I, so I'll say this as somebody who, who's, who's been, you know, on deck, but also seen some behind the scenes stuff. I never, ever once in your career got the impression that when you were on deck or when you were, you know, when you were in a final, you didn't have it in your head. I'm going to beat this guy, whether it was Pearsall or Phelps, Jay, it's, um, and, and it, it's kind of like if we were walking in your shoes, maybe we should think that, but it didn't, you never gave me that impression. Why is that? Um, I never went into a race knowing that I was going to win. I went into each race excited being like, let's see what you guys got. Like I would love just going head to head with someone and I'm a racer. Like I know how to race and I love racing. And that is why I love swimming. Cause I can race every day in swim practice. I can race at swim meets. It's like you versus seven other guys. It's like mano y mano. He's like, who wants it more? I love that. I thrive off that. And I mean, that's, I've never went and be like, oh, I'm going to beat this guy. Like, no, I was like, I want to race. Like, I just was out there having fun. To me, racing is fun. And I was just having fun. I wasn't there and being like, oh, I'm going to beat this guy. It wasn't anything like that. I was like, let's have fun. Let's race. You know, it's, it's, you've got an interesting mix going on right now. You're back home in Gainesville. You get yeah. back with Troy. And you've got the most talented athlete, arguably, on okay. earth right now with Dressel that you're training with. Yeah. And that's a, that is a, that's a nice recipe uh, if you're on the run-up to the Olympic Games. Uh, give us some insight into training, you know, with, with Troy on deck and with Dressel in the water. Give me, give me some insight. You can, you can earmark it as pain. Uh, you know, what, what is it like? That's kind of daunting going into practice. Probably not for you, but like paint a picture. What's, what's that like? It's, it's grueling. Um, let's just say if they have an 800 IM at the Olympics, I got it. Um, it's just, uh, we're grinding right now. Um, but dude, racing, I love racing Dressel. Like, and he's, he reminds me of me when I was younger. Like we never, we were never scared to race anyone else. We always accepted the challenge. And I love that about him because it doesn't matter if it's a 50 free or if it's like 10, 200s, he will be in my face the whole way. And if I keep, if I, if I see him slipping or if he sees me slipping, he'll be like, Hey, come on, old man, let's go. Or I'll be like, come on, young buck. Are you going to let this old guy beat you? Like we throw jabs at each other and we push each other. And I think like we're going to do some damage this summer. I used to love beating people in practice. It just felt so good. It kept things so You get like, like you get like chills. 
like I just got chills in my because it happened this morning like <laughs> I just I just get chills and it makes me like try even harder the next practice it's the magic ellipse elixir to training yeah it, it, yeah. it, it, it is winning in practice so yeah. for in my day I, I had an underwater I could I could just kill people off the wall mm -hmm. but and I know you're underwater. It's like, I'm like, Brian's the fastest underwater swimmer on earth. He's got to be. But, you know, Dressel's got snap. So what happens? Do you, do you, are you, can, you, can, you, um, can you take him underwater? I can take him underwater. Um, like you said, Dressel has snap. So he's, he is probably the most explosive swimmer I've ever met. Like off the walls, it is the explosion power that I've never even seen before. And luckily, I have good underwaters that I can like, I have to catch up. I play catch up when I do flip turns with him. And his underwaters are great. They're like, they're great. Um, I just have to try even harder on my underwaters just to keep up with them. But uh, it's, it's awesome. Uh, we're having a lot of fun. Is there a, is there a particular set? Are, you know, all right, let's just put it out there. You're 36 years old. Are you Sammy saving up on some sets and like going, you know, eight, nine, 10, I'm laying back, but eight, nine, 10, I'm going to hammer this kid. No, no, it's, it's usually, it's usually the opposite. It's usually, I'm going to take them out now because if with Dressel, if it's like something that's on a short interval, he, he's not as good. Um, but if you give that kid a little rest, God help us all. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, but it's, it's a battle. Like we just, we love battling each other and we're not afraid to go up against each other. Like we purposely swim next to each other. So we're right like eye to eye all the time. And I love it. It's, uh, when I think back to 2011, 2012, and I think about your, it's, you were, you like a, look like a tree trunk. Your core was, was pretty astounding. And, um, so and I, I know that that is, that's your athletic engine. That's where your, your power comes from. What are you doing? You, and you had some legendary dry land training. Yeah. Are you, are you doing the same things? Is it, is it changed? I'm I'm not doing the like the strongman stuff anymore, uh, like lifting tires or anything like that. Um, but I am I am still working out. Um, if anything, I still need to work on my core more. Um, right now, because uh, I was out of the water for a while uh, from injury, that I'm just getting like now back into it. Um, right now, I'm actually what. Troy has been saying is um, I'm back into swimming shape now. Um, just things that he's been seeing in practice lately. Um, and now I'm just like doing a lot more like leg stuff because I'm just trying to get that explosion like Dressel does. Um, and then hopefully it all comes together at the end. Is it uh, so, uh, you know, we're, we're, are you watching the International Swimming League on, on CBS Sports? You draw, you're not, you're not, you're not watching uh, I, I have to watch it, but I, yeah. I have two kids. Um, that's the last thing they want to see, unless if I'm swimming, they will watch swimming. But other than that, it's like, no, it's playing outside, taking walks with the kids, playing with them, building stuff. We're not watching uh swimming. You know, that is, I said you had a great recipe in terms of where you're at right now, training wise, mm -hmm. but the, the reality is, when you're um, when you're an elite and you're doing the kind of work you're doing, then Greg Troy gruffs and says, "Mel, it's honest work." And I know what honest work means. It's painful. Talking to PVK who trained with him, it's like you know, yep. it, it's it's hard. But you're horizontal in between workouts, and you're you're just mm -hmm. like you're not doing anything. But as a dad, kids don't let you do that. So oh, no. how, are, how have you managed that? You know, well, I'm still having a hard time with it. Um, honestly, it is probably the, one of the hardest things that I've ever had to do, um, is training to be the top of the top in my, in swimming and being able to go home and be 
the best dad I could be and best husband I can be. Um, it's taxing. And I feel like I'm always trying to swim. I'm like just trying to swim up just to get a breath of air and because I'm not getting it. Like I don't have that luxury as most people do. Um, so, but at the same time, I don't mind it because I've never been happier in my entire life. Whether I make the Olympic team and get another medal or not, I honestly, like, this is, this is me. Like, I am meant to be a dad. I am meant to be a husband. And I am freaking loving my life right now because as tired as I am every day I come home, there's something about when I walk in the door and they go, daddy's home and they run and just tackle me. I'm like, like, it's like tears coming down. Like I love it so much and I'm just, I'm happy. And it this gives is you a break it. from swimming. It, it makes it, it, it makes me, I'm cu- we're curious about international swimming league because it's happening now because Dressel's there, you're yeah. back, you're focused on your training. And, um, but it, it, so just it was a curiosity, but it's a it's it sounds like you're focusing on you and what you need to do right now, and that's all zeroed in on summer 2021. It's it's um so I mean, let's bottom line it. Uh, can can you share your schedule? What my swim schedule? What's your swim schedule? What, what are you going to swim at trials? Um, right now, if I had to choose, um. The way my training is going, 2 a.m., 4 a.m., 2 back, um, 2 free, and 100 fly. Wow. That's a big schedule. Yeah. It's <laughs> – yep, that's uh, the normal. <laughs> I so, mean, if, the, if there's something longer in an IM event, I might be doing that uh, – I see a lot of 300s in practice, which is I'm not happy about. But well, you, you know, if, if you drop the 400 AM, I think everyone would forgive you. But it's it's it sounds like <laughs> it sounds like that's way the way Greg trains. Greg, Greg's training to some of 400 AM. Uh, yeah. Uh, as of right now, yeah. Um, I mean, I did miss six weeks, so I'm a little bit behind, and I'm just I'm trying to play catch up. So I mean, Troy definitely has me doing longer stuff right now. Um, just getting, trying to get back into shape as quickly as possible. Uh, but I mean, we have what the U S open in like two weeks or something. Um, we're not going to rest shave or anything for that and just see where I'm at. Um, so usually I never swim good in season. So I'll be most likely I'll be pissed off and train even harder afterwards. So this could be good. I've seen some really bad Ryan and Ryan Lochte swims. I've seen some really, like, <laughs> really I've bad. I've seen some ugly. Right? I've seen. Here's the thing. You're, it looks like you're wearing it. You're wearing. You're wearing your bathing suit, and it looks like a training suit that you've had on for a decade. It's lost all its color. <laughs> yep. um, is that what we're going to see at U.S. Open? Are you trying to give us a teaser? Um, I mean, I'll I'll try to put on a I'll fa- a fast suit. Like I I mean, yeah, just so I don't drown. Um. But yeah, you might see a couple of ugly swims again. I mean, that's my that's my that's my thing. <laughs> I don't show it until the very end. So it's a. I keep going back to 2011, 2012. These this was yeah. a period of time. The 2011 World Championships was a particularly like whoa. Yeah, uh, you were on mm-hmm. six medals, five gold, one bronze. Uh, this is that you went 144, 200 meter free, 144, mm-hmm. four, 154 flat, 200 IM, 152, nine, 200 back. You were 407 in the, in the, uh, in the IM. Yeah. So in 12, it was like, wow, this is, this is, uh, this is your moment. You had a great Olympics in 12. It was a fantastic mm-hmm. Olympics, but it, it, it appears on paper and looking at the data, like you were ready to swim. You trained for 400 IM and you delivered in the 400 IM and it, your mm-hmm. other events suffered a little bit is that an yeah. accurate assessment um yes and no um i think there's a i mean i definitely did train i mean every olympic year um troy likes to ramp it up 
a lot. Um, so, and that's why this has been so hard. Uh, cause last year was supposed to be the Olympic year. We ramped it up and now we're ramping it up again. So, um, but yeah, uh, my, I mean, I was ready. I did the same kind of training that I did for 2011. Uh, I'm, I might've did a little bit more, um, yardage, uh, in 2012, but I mean, that was the past. I forgot all about it. All right. We forgive you for getting the past. Yes. The, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then, then, then we'll, we'll zero it in. That's a, that's a bit, I appreciate you, you know, full, you're like, Hey man, full disclosure, here's my schedule. You gave it to us. It's a, it's, it's a beast of the schedule. What's it going to take? You know, what's it going to take to, to make team USA? To, just the 200 I am. What's it, what, what do you, where, where's, what's the range? It, it, it doesn't, do? it doesn't matter in any race. I feel like it's going to take close to, if not my best times in every race just honestly i'm saying that because i have no idea what is going on in the swimming world <laughs> i am just i am just zoned in into my own swimming like taking care of myself taking care of my family i don't have time to look up times for anyone else not care what anyone else is doing because it doesn't matter as long as like I keep doing what I'm doing every day, um, I just gotta trust the process and enjoy this journey. In terms of mental bandwidth, it sounds like that's probably a, a good way to live your life right now. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a. Uh, <laughs> I I I I Greg Greg Troy scares me. He's. He, I've been with him since 2000 and what two and i had like a like a four-year break from him but he still scares the shit out of me sorry uh, like i he's the only man in this entire world that i'm scared of and i don't understand why because i told him i was like after i'm done swimming me and you we're gonna put on some boxing gloves and go at it because <laughs> i got a lot of frustration with you <laughs> Do you feel a little traumatized by Greg? You, are, you trauma, oh, yeah. are you suffering from yeah. trauma from all the work? Oh, yeah. So my wife says, like, you always, like, look like you're swimming in your sleep. I'm, I'm like, I'm still swimming. Uh, it's funny. Uh, it's scary, but funny. So let's, let's make it real world terms. We've seen, we, you know, you have this long, long, long career. And you talked about it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But um, let's just say you got, you, you, you got hammered by Troy. Yeah. Uh, What's the difference in recovery time? Like what, you know, some people, how many, how many sessions are you doing a week in the water? Uh, nine. You're doing nine. Do you now so a lot of people will do a recovery practice every third. Uh, See, did you, we're I mean, supposed to, we're supposed to have recovery practices on like a Wednesday, but it just seems lately there is no recovery now. Um, and I, don't know if uh, Troy's getting old or what, but after practice, I'm like, man, that was so hard. He's like, what? I'm like, coach, do you understand what you just put? Like 10, 300 best average. Like he's like, what? They were on four minutes. That's an easy interval. I'm like, well, we're going all out. Like you don't understand that. So, um, it's, <laughs> uh, he knows what he's doing. That's all I know. Um, I've been with him forever. And in my eyes, he is the best coach in the world and he knows how to coach me. And I just try to keep my mouth shut and just do what I'm told. You know, if you, if you talk to Aaron Pearsall, Aaron Pearsall would say about Eddie Reese that, you know, I could have said, I could have done the four and I am. I, I did so much work because yeah. I had to figure out when to sandbag. So do you have moments when you're <laughs> like, I got to sandbag this because Troy's going to kill me if I don't. He's, he's just gonna um, beat me up. Yes, but then the reason why I got to be who I am in the water is I don't sandbag. I don't give up. I don't let up. If the, if we're having like I guess a recovery practice or whatever, I can't let anyone beat me. Like I don't want that because I get pissed off. So I'm always trying to push myself. 
um, whether it's something I always have goals every day in practice, whether it's, if it's going to be a light practice, I'll work on my underwaters every wall or something like that. Uh, just so I have a purpose every day going to practice. All right. We, we were talking a little bit about Aaron Pearsall and, and you, I appreciate you sharing what you did. My man. That's my You're, man. That's my he's boy. Cool, he's a cool cat. Dude, he? he by far the coolest, chillest swimmer I've ever met. Like I learned my ways, like getting ready. Like I'm like, dude, Pearsall, like how, you're about to go to the Olympics. How are you so chill? He's like, man, it is what it is. I'm here. I'm like, dude, I love you, man. You're awesome. <laughs> so if you love him so much and you learned at the feet of Aaron Pearsall so, so much, then your first long course meters world record was the yeah. world championships in 2007 you beat yep. him you killed yes. his seven-year win streak yes so why'd you do that to him hey come on i'm not hey when you when when the star says swimmers take your marks it's everyone's game like it's anyone's game um you don't play mr nice um but you know win or lose at the end of the race i'm like hey what's up like it doesn't matter um and that's how he was um, actually after 2007, he was a little, I think he was a little shocked. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it just, uh, I mean, that's what happens. Like, that's why swimming, that's why we have records because they're meant to get broken. And, um, it's just how you react afterwards will, I guess, define you as a person athletes have transformative moments and they yeah. do remember i know you forget the past i know you're like mm -hmm. it's the past but they have transformative moments you know it's is was that your first long course meters world record beating pierce all that's something people get you got to put in context man you, mm -hmm. you've accomplished all this in the era of Pearsall and phelps which is astounding but but what is what was that a transformative moment for you or if not you know is there a moment where you're like my brain rewired this, like this, the confidence shot through the roof. This was a, this was a moment in time that really changed me. I don't think it was the 200 back. Um, I'm trying to think, uh, if anything, it was a race that I got second in, which transformed me because if I was, close we'll say like for with michael phelps um if i got second um i think it was uh in 2006 um in the 200 im um i got second and i was like so like three tenths off or something off of them and i was pissed off and I went my best time by like over a second or something, but I was pissed off because I thought I could have won. Um, and it made me hungry to go back into the pool and train even harder. Um, so I think that was my kind of turning point was back then in 2006, 2007, when I broke the world record, I think it, which I did it on a fractured foot. I remember. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think, I think it was me getting second that transformed me into, you know, wanting to be better, um, training even harder, um, setting my goals even higher. Um, so. Yeah, no, no the, the, the second place makes sense. When I think people ask me, it's like, you know, they ask you about transformative races. I'm like, you know, I think – Phelps in 2004 getting bronze in the 200 free was a really good, was, was a transformative yeah. swim because we wouldn't have gotten the 2008 200 free. So yeah. I really appreciate and respect that you're like, yeah, I got silver in, in six and it pissed me off. And I think it, I, I think I just knew in seven it was going to happen because of the 2006 performance because I was so pissed off. So I knew my next year was going to be great because I dedicated each day to making it a great day. Then, then how can we piss Ryan Lochte off? How do I piss I'm already him pissed off, right off. Now so that we can do it? So you got, you I'm, got it next year. 
you don't you don't see it, but I'm I'm pissed off just because I haven't been in the swimming world lately. Um, I'm pissed off about that. I'm pissed. Just there's so many things that I'm pissed off about that I'm just keeping inside. That's just fueling, like the Olympics being postponed. I got so pissed off from that, but I keep it inside, and I don't let my family know that. And I just take it out in the pool. Every time I go to a swim practice, I take it out there. Here's, here's a personal question. You know, I, I don't know. I don't, this, this comes to mind. Uh, so I've, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in therapy. I've been in therapy since I was in my 20s. Do, mm-hmm. Have you ever gone to a therapist, clinical therapist? Yeah. yeah. Sit down, do your time. Phelps did it. Or are you doing it? I'm not doing it anymore. I did it. Um, yeah. I did it. Um, I'm the type of person that always held everything in. Um, cause I, I have a really big thing of putting negative energy out there. And especially in this world, that's the last thing we need. We need positive. So I always kept my negative stuff that was happening in my life inside because I never wanted to share it. Um, And it was hard for me to share that kind of stuff with a therapist going forward uh, just because I didn't want to put that out there. So I just bottled it in and I take it out. Like you see me sometimes go underwater in practice and I'll be like, and I'll start cussing underwater, like just getting it out there. Um, And that's why I go to swim practice all the time is, and I just train my hardest every day is because I'm putting, I'm like taking out my anger. So that's um, my, that's my therapist is the swimming pool. I like that. I like that. That makes sense. I think a lot, you talk to a lot of people who've ever represented team USA. They say the same thing. They said a lot of my success is because I put all that stress and all that anger into the pool. But after you're telling me about 2006, I'm like, Hey man, we got to piss Ryan Lockie off. So he's ready. Cause 2007 Uh, was uh, amazing. I got, I got, I got a lot of stuff that I'm pissed off about that. I go to practice every day with a purpose. You're, you're locked and loaded. I'm locked and loaded. So we're, 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 um, it's September, 2021. And, uh, you think ahead and like, imagine, like visualize yourself. Okay. September, 2021. Um, I'm relaxing. It's this, this chapter's over. You don't think about that. You're not, you know, you you haven't thought beyond the Olympics. Um, I mean, I'm going to keep swimming. Of course I want to, um, depending on, I mean, I can't, I can't say depending on the outcome. I'm definitely going to keep swimming. I want to, cause I'm just loving the sport so much. Um, but I mean, after what I envision of how, like the summer 2021 summer is going. Um, I mean, I want to travel with my family and for a little, like maybe a, a couple of weeks and then get back in the pool. I don't want to take a big break. So let's, let's just say that you're 48 and you can no longer make the Olympic team because you'll be making the Olympic team for the next 12 years. <laughs> Uh, but let's, let's, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of joking, but let's just say, do, do you keep swimming? Do you keep swimming masters? Because I, this, this will scare Josh Davis and, and Rowdy Gaines to death because they live and die to, to break masters world records. Um, I mean, I might show up just to break a couple of world records. <laughs> um, but no, uh, when I'm done swimming, I'm done swimming. Um, I'm not going to. I mean, you rarely might see me go to swimming uh, just to get a workout in. I'll work out somewhere else. Uh, when I hang it up, I hang it up. So, do you do you think about yourself in terms of um, a career? Like, you know, it's like, hey, you know, when I when I hang my trunks up, I'm thinking I might do this. Is it are there things that interest you, or have you thought have you thought that far? Um, yeah, I mean, I've thought about it. Um, you know, starting my own swim team. Um, doing swim clinics, um, traveling the world and just teaching kids like things that I've learned throughout my swimming career. Um, and just helping the younger generation. Um, you know, you've seen me on pool decks. I love kids. 
I love kids and I love just hanging out with them, talking to them. And that's what I want to do. I just want to, I guess, be another, uh, a role model for the, uh, for the kids again. I think that you should have a professional franchise competing at, at, at ISL. I think that you should be this, you know, if you hang your suit up, it's like you could have your pro team and you could have your global Ryan Lochte clinic series. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that, that'd be, that, 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 that would be a good home base. You just work from there. Yeah. Why not? All right, buddy. Is I'll, there, I'll, I'll get, I'll get, uh, I'll get Michael Phelps back. I'll get who else? I'll get you. <laughs> I'll get all the old guys back. <laughs> It's, it's, if there, is there, do you have any parting thoughts? Is there anything that, that you want to share with folks? You're like, nobody asked me this question. They should ask me this question. No, I mean, I've, I've honestly been asked every question in the book. Um, just, um, I'm, I'm happy. I'm loving my life. Um, the, everything, everything that's happened in my past has happened for a reason. I honestly believe that. And, you know, I've had a lot of ups and I mean, the whole world knows I've had a lot of downs, but everything has shaped me to the person that I am today. And I couldn't be more than happier with the person I am right now. 